So in this video, I'd like to continue the discussion on power, looking at it from the authoritarian point of view. Um, and I want to do it through the lens of a passage from Nietzsche's book, Human All Too Human. In the section titled On the History of Moral Feelings, he describes the psychological basis for the misunderstanding between the sufferer and the perpetrator. And he gives as an example the rich man who steals the beloved of the poor man because he cannot put himself in the position of the poor man. He does not know what it is like to have very little. So he does not understand the suffering that his actions have caused. And conversely, the poor man does not understand that the rich man cannot grasp his position. So as far as the psychological underpinnings go, this is a brilliant illumination by Nietzsche. However, he goes on to give an exa the uh, following example of how a man can kill a gnat and not feel anything because of the distance between the two beings. Man does not know what it is like to be a gnat. And in this uh, sort of question that uh, Nietzsche precedes Thomas Nagel in his asking of what it is like, what is it like to be a bat? This cannot be applied to the relationship between the sufferer and the perpetrator because both are essentially human. There is no such question as what is it like to be a gnat that arises between this type of relationship. The one in power cannot ask himself what is it like to be human. He knows precisely what it is like. But Nietzsche says that assuming a higher position, as he calls it, makes one cold and is able to assuage the conscience. Um, so he, there's a type of implication that assuming power or a higher position gives one a type of uh, psychopathy in, in that you can completely remove yourself psychologically from those under you, from those with no power. Um, and so there's a sort of plausible deniability there, which is interesting. I don't think Nietzsche was going for that, but the implication is uh, undeniable, I think, when you start to think about it. Um, also, this does not take away from the action itself, such as when the cruel man, the uh, rich man, robbed the poor man. This action is still cruel and unjust, um, no matter the psychological position of both parties, their, relative posi their, their position relative to each other. The act itself remains unjust, and the poor man conceivably has experienced a uh, type of pain. So he can, he can imagine that his actions do cause suffering, I think, unless we are talking about complete psychopaths we can imagine that the one in power can at some level put himself put himself in the position of the one with no power so i think it's 
an interesting uh, relationship psychologically, but ultimately there does not li the the distance created is not ultimate. It is not abs absolute. I think as you can take as is implied by what Nietzsche wrote. Um, now, this same distance, I think, is created when a government takes action to, um, for war, let's say, for example. Um, it can rally the uh, people for war at, by extending that type of psychological distance to the people it means to wage war with. Um, and that is a fascinating phenomenon that not only does the government, it's the people in power, have this distance from it, the people under it, the citizen, but that the citizens are able to take that same distance and apply it to an outside enemy. And that is really, I think, the whole basis for the type of actions that the state can engender and the support in, it can rally. Um, and I think that type of distance is never going to be bridged. Uh, and uh, this is a mild form of psychopathy, I think, that any human can entertain. So it's very interesting to explore human psychology from the vantage point of this sort of distance, and that people can relate to each other depending on this type of psychological understanding they have with the other. Um, of course, this is based on, this can be based on many arbitrary type things like skin color, religion, nationality. And there's, um, I think, a million ways that people can put walls up to not understand and to purposefully create barriers. It, this finds its ultimate expression in the uh, relationship of the power, in the relationship of those in power to those who are not. Um, I think this would make power a type of abstract institution that anyone can take on in some form or another. Um, and these type of, in the, in the type of psychological distance Nietzsche is talking about. It's like a type of mantle one would take on, or a cloak one would wear, a disguise in order to perform some certain deed or action. So I think um, it's very fascinating to me to uh, look at these types of what, what the underpinnings are of power and Nietzsche illuminates that brilliantly. Um, so thank you.